Networks just invented a new way to configure and troubleshoot Linux networking, the Network Command Line Utility. I'm Diane Patton, a Technical Marketing Engineer for Cumulus Networks, and today I will discuss and demo NCLU. With NCLU, Cumulus makes the transition to web scale networking for all of the networking community very simple. Linux is the perfect operating system for the entire data center, from servers to storage to networking. It is open source with a very large mature community supporting it. It's very extensible. Many applications exist that can run on Linux, and it's also very flexible. Using Linux everywhere unifies the data center. As you can see here, though, in Linux, there are different tools for each job. One of the reasons Linux moves so quickly is that there's separate sets of people working in parallel on separate packages that are not at all dependent on each other or have to wait for each other to release updates. But this results in each tool with its own user interface. Cumulus Networks, however, has wrapped all of this up to make it quick and easy. We have developed the Network Command Line Utility, or NCLU, that provides a unifying command line user interface that leverages these underlying tools. We did not replace any of the native Linux tools with NCLU, but instead we layered NCLU on top of them to provide both a consistency as well as a better user interface for those interested in network operations. To that end, we retain both the Linux networking model as well as compatibility with the Linux user tools. So what's so great about NCLU? Well, first, it makes Linux very simple to configure for the networking application. A simple command net gets you started and help is included. There's guardrails to prevent mistakes and typos. If you type something wrong, you may get a suggestion for what you probably meant. Examples are also embedded within. We also support rollback to previous configurations, and finally, you never leave Bash shell into another shell to configure or troubleshoot any connections. This depicts the demo I have set up on my computer. In the interest of time, I'll configure only Leaf 1 real time, starting with virtually no configuration except a loopback address and a host name, which I added earlier via NCLU. As an example, I will bring up a bridge access port on VLAN 15 to server 1, and BGP unnumbered peering between leaf 1 and the spines, using the easy net commands. And to prove connectivity, I will ping from server 1 to leaf 2 loopback and show you a few other commands and features. So let's move on to the topology. I will configure leaf 1. The spines, server 1, and the other leaves are already configured to save time. The spines and the other leaves are configured with a loopback and BGP unnumbered, and Server 1 has an IP address on its Ethernet 1 port along with the default gateway. I also have eBGP unnumbered between the other leafs and spines. So right now we're at the bash prompt on leaf 1. So a net tab will show us the high level possibilities. You can see we can add, delete, clear, show, etc. all from here. So let's start by configuring the bridge access on leaf 1. We can access help at any time, just by typing help along with any multiple of keywords. We know we want to create a VLAN, so let's try net add VLAN help. Here's the command that we want. So now we'll add VLANs 15 through 20 since we think we'll add more VLANs later. So we can use net add VLAN 15 through 20. Now, we want to put a switch port in a VLAN, so we can use net add interface, and you can see the shortcuts work here, the real keywords interface. And here you can see what is on the remote end of the switch port and the available switch ports. So we want to connect to server 1, so we'll use switch port 1, bridge access 15. Net pending sees the changes just made in the staging area. So let's take a look at what was just added to the config. Net pending, and you can see the entire bridge was added with just the add VLAN command. Let's now add a switch virtual interface. Net add VLAN interface, VLAN 15, and it pulls VLAN number 15 directly from the name, address, 172.21.1. Oh, I forgot the mask, but you can see a suggestion is made, so let me fix that. If we do a net pending then, we can see the changes in the staging area. And then a net commit will apply them. If we then do a net show config, 
we can see the new configuration. All of this operates on top of the existing config file and is interoperable with the regular way of accessing underlying config files. So now let's bring up a BGP peer using BGP unnumbered. I'll do a quick net show BGP summary to show there are currently no peers up right now on LEAF1. As you can see, a net example tab shows the most common scenarios. So we can do a net example BGP unnumbered. And this will not only show us a setup and the required configuration commands, but it also shows us a way to verify that it actually worked. So now let's bring up the peer. Using the example as a guide, we'll use the following commands. So first, let's configure the autonomous system number. And I'm using the autocomplete with tab to make it much easier to type. We add the router ID, which is the same as the loopback. Let's advertise the loopback. And we'll advertise VLAN 15 subnet. Next, we configure BGP unnumbered. And you can see here the list of possible interfaces as well as who the remote end is. So we want to connect to both switch port 51 and 52, so we'll glob that together. Interface. And then we want eBGP. Let's do a net pending to see the staging area. And then finally a net commit. So let's look at the new configuration. Another nice feature is this net show configuration commands. And this shows all the configuration commands you need to get the switch to its current state. So if we do a net show BGP summary, we'll see the new neighbors that we have. And you can see spine one and spine two are now neighbors of this leaf one switch. And then a quick net show route will show the routing table. So let's go to the server's terminal and ping the loopback of leaf two. I know leaf two's loopback address is 172.16.1.2. So we have successfully used NCLU to bring up a bridge and an eBGP peer. While the ping is still going, let's move to leaf one terminal and roll back those BGP commands. A net show commit history will show all the past commits I could potentially roll back to. A net show commit 127 will show what was added with that commit. You could also use a net show commit last just to look at the last one. So now let's actually roll back. If we do a net commit roll back tab, you'll see the different options. And let's roll back to the last commit, which is net commit roll back last. So now let's do a net show BGP summary. And you can see here that we have no peers again. Moving to server one, you can see the pings are unsuccessful. Moving to leaf one, let's roll back again to the previous config to get the peers back up. And we can see the pings are successful again. Another huge advantage of this command line utility is that during this entire process, we never left bash. I'll use net show interface all and grep that into up to see which interfaces on the switch are up. In addition, I can then pipe that into WC minus L to see the number of interfaces on the switch that are up. NCLU makes a transition to Linux and web scale networking for all of the networking community very simple. It requires only eight commands on leaf one to get this up and running, not including the net commit. In summary, NCLU provides a unified user interface for all tools, easy to use for network engineers, you never leave bash, and it provides help and examples to guide you through. 
Cumulus Linux continues to provide unmatched flexibility and agility via an open Linux distribution that can be automated like any other Linux system in the data center. With NCLU, Cumulus is making the transition to web scale networking for all of the networking community very simple and easy. Thank you for watching and have a great day. <music>